Welcome to In a World with Real Media. I'm your host, Brad Burrow. In this podcast, we'll dive into the lives of the most successful people in business. We'll learn how they overcame adversity, took advantage of opportunities, and learned from their experiences. Learn from our experts, get inspired, then go live your story. It's In a World with Real Media. Welcome to the In a World. With Real Media Podcast. I'm Brad Burrow. Today we have a very special guest, Brenda Van Lingen. And just so everybody knows, uh, Brenda and I have known each other for a long, long time. We were talking about this the other day. It's it's years back, back in the Coach's Edge days. That's right. That's like a name from the past. Yeah. Um, and we have recently, uh, in the last couple of years, been working on a very, very groundbreaking project on the history of women's basketball and the podcast today we just want to talk about you know some of the awesome things about the podcast or, or about the the uh, um, the documentary docu series we're calling it how it came about um, you know some of the fun things that have happened Cecil's been a big part of the the production side of this and kind of came on board uh, you know a little you know a third of the way into it and really has taken it and run with it and we've done a lot a lot of water under the bridge since we started but uh i just wanted to talk about that so thanks for for being on i really appreciate yeah, it yeah this will be fun we'll, we'll we can recount the last couple of years and all that we've accomplished and everything that's ahead so it'll be fun so brenda i can remember um we were you know i'm baseball dad so you know mm -hmm. it seems like all we ever did outside of work was go to baseball games the last four or five years but we ran into each other at a, at a baseball game mm -hmm. and um, kind of rekindled and everything. And it was soon after that that you called me and said, hey, I have this idea. Do you remember that? Absolutely. <laughs> I do, because I had been thinking about getting in touch with you because a few years before that, you had invited me here to tour around Real Media and had kind I of planted. Yeah, that. you kind of had planted the seed. Like, yeah, we've got all this cool stuff here. So if you ever have a project, keep me in mind. And and so as I was thinking about this project, about recording and capturing all this history with women's basketball, I'm like, I need to get a hold of Brad. And then we ran into each other at that baseball field, and I'm like, okay, I need to follow up. And that's it when was, we started it was talking. Fate. That's right. We started <laughs> talking about it. Yeah, so so I remember you came in and, and you were you were actually you had started the process of right. of doing Zoom interviews, which was really smart, by the way. I mean, you were kind of getting pre story and stuff, but you were thinking that maybe you would build a documentary just from the Zooms. Right, right, because uh, I mean, I didn't know anything about Zooms before COVID, and when the pandemic hit and everybody started doing Zoom calls, I realized you could. Uh, actually record. And so as I was talking to the way this project gets started, I talked to Marsha Sharp, who's the legendary coach at Texas Tech. Yeah. And it was right after Pat Summit, who was the all-time leading winner in women's basketball and then eight national championships. And everybody knows who Pat Summit is and, and had to step away from the game because of Alzheimer's and then passed away way too young. Yeah. After she had passed away, Marsha and I said, you know, there are a lot of coaches that are in their retirement years and we're losing their stories. We need to do something to capture them. And, you know, she was kind of talking about maybe writing a book and that wasn't necessarily my thing. And then when I realized you could record interviews through Zoom, I started having phone calls with people and started capturing some Zoom interviews. And then that's when I came to you and said, OK, I have this idea there's this history of women's basketball that really hasn't ever been recorded and needs to be captured. And, you know, can we do something with this? And, you know, I loved your positive attitude about it. And then you also saying Zoom interviews are nice, but let's do this in a little <laughs> better quality than that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to remember uh, the look on your face when I said that to you. It's like, did you have any idea what you're getting into at that point? Uh, probably not. Yeah. You know, because... At, at the time, I think I thought we could probably tell this story in, in one documentary. And as I started collecting the stories and realizing how much has not ever been recorded on women's basketball history, I realized it needed to be a documentary series. Right. And then to find out that, yeah, we couldn't do it just as easily as record some Zoom interviews because that wouldn't be the quality that we wanted. Then that's when we realized how big this project would be. 
So <clears throat> I remember <clears throat> when we were talking about this, uh, we have to have something that we can go out and start fundraising with. Right. And so we were brainstorming about it and said, well, what if we made a, made a Texas trip? And uh, we embarked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> on, I remember jumping in the car and uh, in the rental car and heading down there. We had a we had a vehicle that barely we fit everything in. I mean, it was yeah. like we Evan and I had to had to pack this thing just perfectly. If you remember that, yeah, I do. I do. And we were all three in there driving down to to West Texas and uh, with you know barely enough room. I think Evan. Good thing he was in the back because he's he's about this skinny. <laughs> That's and, true. <laughs> and and uh, we got it all in there. But when we would tear down and then set, and then reload, just like sometimes I remember it took us a couple times because we you had to put everything back just perfectly. Yeah. I mean literally to the like ceiling. Like little Jenga. <clears throat> yeah. <puzzle>. Right. <laughs> but but I remember I remember you know being at uh, Wayland Wayland Baptist and just the. You could immediately tell that there's a sense of, I don't know, it just had a really cool feel, and you knew you were capturing stories that were really, really important. Do you yeah, remember that feeling? Absolutely. I'm going in there and seeing the history at Wayland, and you know that was the kickoff of the whole thing. Yeah, it was such an important program in the history of women's basketball that some people know about, but most people don't. And the fact that in the 1950s, this team of this women's basketball team was flying all over the country in these little four-seater airplanes uh, to compete. And then they won 131 games in a row and they won all these national championships and they've preserved the history really well there at Wayland. And so we stepped into that and then we started interviewing people and the stories we started capturing. And then we went out and saw the actual airplanes that they flew around the yeah. country in. So that was that was a cool part of it. And that really kicked this thing off. I remember going out to the airport. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Like, and we were actually in one of the, I got the, in. the airplanes that mm-hmm. the Flying Queens were, were flying in. Yeah. I got in one. I decided not to take his offer to fly around in one. <laughs> Did Claude offer that? Did he? That would have been fun. Yeah, Claude was the, the the original sponsor, but his son Mike took us out there and he he kind of he yes. kind of yeah, he kind of did, but I I was a little hesitant. You thought, well, maybe I'll pass on that opportunity. <laughs> yeah, so that was fun and then then we ended up going to uh, Texas Tech right after that and mm-hmm. Marsha uh, we had interviewed her at Waylon. Yep. She so she played at Waylon as well, right? Well, she went there to play. She grew up in West Texas and was influenced by the incredible program they had. And she went there, and she was told by Harley Redden, the head coach, that she probably wasn't tall enough to play. But she famously has a book now called "Tall Enough to Coach," <laughs> and so yeah. she started coaching the the B team which they were the A team, the team was called the Flying Queens, the B team was called the Queen Bees, yeah. and yeah. so Marsha Sharp got her, her start of her coaching career um, coaching the Queen Bees. So that's where she started coaching. Of course, she goes on to coach at Texas Tech and wins a national championship, coaches Cheryl Swoop, is one of our most philanthropic probably coaches in the game across the country yeah. she's influenced so many people and and like i said she's the first person i talked to about this project and she's been a supporter of it all, all the way through yeah she's great I, I love hanging out with her we also had some some other fun uh, stops on the texas trip and i don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it but you know being in waco with sanja mm-hmm. hogue i mean that uh as you know, is one of my favorite right. favorites of, of all time. That was really fun hanging out with her, and just the just the personality, and you know, just just hearing her speak and everything. That was really fun. So that was that was fun in Waco, and then we go to Austin, and uh, we get to have lunch with uh, Jody Conrad. I know, and uh, you know, interview her uh, in in the uh, Hall of Fame area. And it was just really a cool thing, but. I'll never forget. I just got to tell this little story. You've heard a hundred times from me, probably, but the the whole soccer story at lunch has always. I just never will forget that when Jody said she went to her first soccer game and said uh, said uh, Yeah, I don't understand soccer. You know, <laughs> it's like, huh? Oh, huh? Oh. <laughs> Something almost happened. <laughs> <laughs> she she was raised in basketball, so that's right. But just seeing being part of. The history and seeing all of that was just so awesome. Yeah, and it 
And it allowed us to capture, I think, 10 interviews we did on that trip. And it, it the history spanned several decades. So we were able to put together then a promo video to explain to people what we were doing in this project. And we were able to, you know, capture different eras, different parts of the story. And, and it, it got us it got us started because you can yeah. talk to people all you want to about what this is going to be about. And the video that you helped produce, we were able to launch a website, if not for them dot com, and have our promo videos, a you know, a short one and a six minute one. And it really got us going to raise awareness and start raising money to make this thing happen. Yeah. Yeah. That that trip is I'll never forget that trip. That was that was a fun, fun trip and um, got us started. Brenda, can you talk about and Cecil? I'm going to get to you uh, shortly here because <laughs> you're kind of as we're moving in. We're going down chronologically, the here, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, talk about the importance of documenting history. I mean, we talk about that at the, in Dallas. You know, um, you talk about Title IX, um, women really fighting through. You know, to be to to be seen and for mm-hmm. the sport to grow and all that stuff. Talk about how important it is for people to understand you know, the women that really fought those battles. Yeah. It's an exciting year in women's sports, women's basketball. This year at the national championship game that was televised on on ABC, 10 million viewers watched. It's a record-setting number of viewers that are embracing and enjoying women's basketball and women's sports in general. And if not for them... If not for those that broke barriers and changed social norms many years ago, we wouldn't have what we do today. And that's the importance of this project is being able to let people know we didn't just get here magically. It didn't just happen. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of sacrifice. It took a lot of really courageous people. And we captured those stories in a way that we, we learn their personalities, we learn the stories and what they had to battle, but also just the joy that they had in competing in sports. And this last year was an important time because we celebrated the 50th anniversary of Title IX. Mm-hmm. But many people don't know it was the 40th anniversary of the NCAA sponsoring women's sports. So what happened in that 10-year gap? And so our docu-series will tell the stories of what happened uh, in that time. There were women before Title IX ever passed that got opportunities, and those that had opportunities became the leaders when we needed them the most. When the NCAA was not interested in women's sports, they had to form their own organization. And when Title IX was passed, and not even originally had anything to do with sports. It was about educational opportunities. And when it was realized, well, yeah, sports are part of the educational process, those women stepped in and really battled for it to be implemented. There was no college women's sports when Title IX passed. Not not really any to speak of. Maybe a few pockets here and there. But it took those women and the men that supported them. And that's a big, important part of this Mm -hmm. story, too. It took those people working together to establish the foundation for what we now enjoy today. Yeah. A little side note, too. We actually interviewed both coaches from the national championship game. That's right. How about that? Yeah. And we did not interview very many, if, if none more than that, like current coaches. But Lisa Bluter at Iowa, mm-hmm. the University of Iowa, and the state of Iowa has such rich history, so we were able to capture her perspective. Mm-hmm. And then Kim Mulkey, who has been a part of uh, the history of this game for a long time, she was on the Louisiana Tech team that won the last AIAW championship before there was the breakaway to the NCAA. There was still another AIAW championship after that, but the one with all of the teams involved. And yeah. she was on the first NCAA championship team as a player. And then, of course, she's won championships at Baylor and then now at LSU. Yeah. And and we were able to interview her and get her perspective on history. <clears throat> but the most burning question I have for Kim, though, is or actually for Sanjay is – what does she think about the way Kim dresses? <laughs> what do you think the answer would be? To that? Well, uh, so we as need to you get her know, on the phone. as you know, through this process, <laughs> if people saw Kim Mulkey's outfits on the sideline, which I, 
who didn't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How I could mean, you not see him? Right? It was all over social media, <laughs> all over television. But she was influenced by Sanja Hope. Yeah. Who wore white full length mink coats and uh, other other things that really got people's attention yeah. back in the day because she was drawing attention to her women's basketball team. She wanted to people to take notice of them. And, you know, I think Kim may have been influenced a little bit by yeah, that. Yeah, you, you can definitely see that. <laughs> I just want to – so just a little note. When we see Sanjay again, we got to get her on camera and say, tell us about this little thing. <laughs> what <laughs> tips you would you have for her? <laughs> That'd be pretty funny, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so we talked about the history – um, I want to kind of transition to um, bringing Cecil in. You know, I think your first trip, Cecil, with us was Iowa. Yeah, was absolutely. an Iowa trip, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're heading out. You had no idea what you're probably getting into <laughs> at the time, but, uh, you know, ended up embracing it and really learning a lot. Talk about your experience, mm-hmm. you know, and some of the, some of the, the thoughts on that first trip. Yeah, well, you know, I was new to the company and I was new to meeting you and really getting to know Brad. So, we, you know, we set out in this van for a week and we're like, all right, <laughs> what's going to happen? Yeah. You know, we had no idea, you know, what the schedule would be like, you know, what we were going to encounter. But, you know, it was fantastic. And and I'm, you know, I didn't do Division One school. I went to art school. I'm a filmmaker. So it was new to me to be on these campuses and just see the scope. Like, I really, I, I didn't understand... These are like corporations inside these schools. I mean, when we went to LSU, I was just like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, but Iowa was a fantastic introduction because everyone was so gracious and just so great. And their stories were so unique. And we've talked about, you know, my parents growing up and things like that. The opportunities weren't there. And to meet these people from that same time period that had opportunity was really, really cool. I really enjoyed that. And that trip to (laughs) Iowa City was really unique. I mean, you came in, and that was a unique trip because each trip was unique. But besides all day at the Hall of Fame where we did the interviews, then Jan Jensen, who's the associate head coach for Iowa, her grandmother played and was a scoring champion in 1921. Absolutely. Over 100 years ago. (laughs) And we got to go to her house, the three of us. And we saw trophies from 1921. We saw uh, game, uniforms, game ball. Game ball. <laughs> and then then Jan read from her grandmother's journal, yeah. which, I mean, that that's one of the really, I and mean, there's, there's so many cool parts of this, right? But to hear a voice from over 100 years ago that's part of this documentary series, and that was like yeah. the first trip you went exactly. on. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I was blown away. It was just amazing. And then, and then I'm sorry yeah, because go, because go. later that night and this is this is where I have to give kudos to you guys because like you said sometimes you didn't know the schedule I tried to map it out ahead of time sometimes <laughs> things got a little crazy that was our longest day of the year of all of our trips because we stopped at Iowa Wesleyan because Iowa Wesleyan was one of two colleges in the country that offered scholarships to women to play basketball in the 50s and for a long time they were the only ones and we went, you went, Brad, with your yeah. drone around campus. Yeah, so campus. I'm out shooting drone shots, and you guys are in shooting trophies. You we, remember that? We went into the trophies, and we <laughs> had to go and, like, dig into the back of this trophy case because they weren't even displaying these trophies. And yeah. they'd gotten, like, second place in the nation, third place in the nation. They weren't even displaying them. And now Iowa Wesleyan's been shut down. Oh, no way. They, they closed down the university. And so the fact that we captured that... Wow. Uh, history. I, didn't even know that. Wow. I don't even know where those trophies are going to go at this point, but wow. we got some really important history on a lot of our trips. But that one late at night that we decided <laughs> to stop at and then drive whatever three more hours over to Illinois. Yeah. But that was a really important stop because that 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 yeah. uh, university is closed down. Wow. And they're like missing trophies. I mean, they could be in that case and no one would even know. Yeah. I mean, we mm-hmm. probably photograph things that people haven't seen in. 40 years. Yeah. Or longer. Yeah. 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 But that's what the <clears throat> the trips are kind of like, you know, we would we would just be capturing as much content and, you know, drone shots and B-roll, do the interviews, set up the cameras, you know, we one of the things that Brenda and I talked about when we first started this is the idea that we would capture all of this in really really high resolution, high quality. So it's going to hold up for a long long time. You know, and I think we've accomplished that. Yeah, you definitely future-proofed all this footage for historical archives and, you know, just the way we approached it with a two-camera setup 
and uh, you know lighting the the ladies you know it was it was a uh, uh, very interesting sometimes were challenges yeah you know, sometimes there was a hurricane would roll through <laughs> or <laughs> you know you never knew what would happen but it always just turned out Cecil and I have talked about the rain. <laughs> I think the Louisiana trip, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I came in late on that trip. Yeah. Yeah. But, we were at LSU at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center, the PMAC, and we were in the, the in the concourse area and the rain just rolled through and I could barely even hear Jill Upton, who I was interviewing, <laughs> but thankfully we had good microphones yeah, set up. I think up we double and, mic'd her that time yeah, just in yeah. case. <laughs> it, yeah, there were a few like that. When we interviewed Charlotte West at Southern Illinois, yeah. the, we were right by the training oh room and the entire football team came into the training room and they were banging around <laughs> in there. And So yeah, there were a few challenges. So that, that yeah. day I remember sitting by the door around the corner from where you guys were shooting and like, <laughs> doing this the whole time like this my hand just started doing that <laughs> but you know and they're like oh sorry sorry you know but yeah. Yeah. that's that's where we wanted to shoot because remember right. charlotte's exactly. picture was on the wall right there right but those kind of challenges i also think about billy you know mm-hmm. that um we were able to spend time with her but do you remember i remember multiple conversations that you and i had brenda about okay how can we do this to try to keep her safe yes and uh that's the only interview that I've ever done where we set up the cameras and then went to a, another room while yeah. the camera was rolling. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. You're talking about Billy Moore, and she was our first Olympic coach when women's basketball was introduced to, into the Olympics in 1976. She grew up in Kansas, in Topeka, Kansas, and actually won a national championship at Cal State Fullerton before that. But she had been battling cancer for the previous, like, 15 years. Yeah. And we had wanted to go out and interview her the the year before, November before. Maybe and we were going to do it at her house. We, I we were going to do it at her house. Yeah. That's right. And she called and said, my back is hurting so bad, I couldn't even sit up for an interview. And so we canceled that trip because I wasn't going to go out to California and interview a bunch of people and not interview Billy Moore. Yeah. So we rescheduled, and, you know, she just kept having— Uh, health challenges. And she said, you know, I can't even be around people. My immune system is so compromised. And so I presented to her, I said, what if we were able to find a place that we could set it up? We would all leave the room. I'd even interview you like through a Zoom, through a computer uh, so that we could capture you with our high quality cameras and audio and everything. And she's like, oh, you don't have to do that. And all. And I I said, it's really important, Billy. And so we were able to talk her into it. And we found a a hotel near her home, a yeah. suite, and that's how we set it up. And I'm so glad she passed away like less than three months after we interviewed her. Yeah. And when I had walked her down the hallway and talked to her, she told me my cancer's back and it's not good. And so yeah. I knew when I interviewed her that day, when we interviewed her, that that was probably going to be the last interview yeah. that she ever did. And the fact that she sat there for like two hours wasn't uh, yeah, it um, yeah almost two hours kind of um leaning against a couch because of the pain yeah. that she was experiencing mm-hmm. and you guys had it all set up so well but i'm so thankful that we did that yeah and that's a, that was a unique situation i Absolutely. know that i've ever done anything quite like that i don't know if you have cecil but yeah. you know typically when you're when you're shooting an interview you know you don't want to leave that camera you yeah, know but we actually did it yeah. Then, I was uh, I was in the bathroom with the monitors and we had the door closed but I could talk to everyone. So if there was anything I'm like hey Brenda do this do that. But yeah, I mean it, that's production on the road. You mm-hmm. figure it out and and an important interview like that you just can't pass it up. Well, and I mean that's she didn't legend. If I, if I remember correctly Brenda, she didn't even grant ESPN or any of the other networks interviews, we were the only ones that she allowed to do that, right? That's right, because she she had told me, I've had a few other people ask for interviews, and I just can't do it. And and the fact that I had been talking to her for like a year and a half before that, and I had done a Zoom interview with her. Yeah. So we had a Zoom interview in case we never were able to do this, but we wanted to get that in-person interview. Yeah. And yeah, she told me some specific documentaries that she was not able to, to be interviewed for and so to be a part of ours is historic so just another reason why if not for them is special and important yeah i mean her her what she said i mean you're not going to replace that no that's that's amazing that whole trip to la was fun 
you know, being at UCLA, that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, was really you know, cool. shooting up there and seeing the court in the background. And, you know, I'm walking around in between shoots and stuff and saying hi to the basketball players. I'm like, I'm walking around at UCLA. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, pretty awesome. And we interviewed Ann Myers, and it yeah. was the Ann Myers court that we were right. overlooking. And, you know, UCLA has all, all this history in so many sports. And, of course, John Wooden was a great influence on Billy Moore and the women's basketball program and was a huge women's basketball fan himself. But one of the interesting things that we found out through research and then through that interview process is the one national championship that the women's team won the trophy's been lost and when we maybe it's at iowa westland <laughs> that's what we were looking for we were, we were hoping we find it in right? that case right <laughs> well one of the players for that team that won the national championship in 78 if i'm not mistaken i think it's 78 went on Anita Ortega to be one of the head um, Los Angeles Police Department chiefs, commanders, can't remember exactly her title. But when we told her that, she's like, we're going to launch uh, an investigation. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next documentary. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I think if anybody could get it done. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The search. You know, one of the things, uh, Cecil, that you and I talked about um, that kind of touched us is – seeing the countenance of people change, you know, when they're starting to interview. And, you know, they're happy. Most of, most of the people that we interviewed were happy to be on, you know, were thrilled about it. But you would see their memories start coming alive. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'd forgotten that or I'd forgotten that. And then seeing that on camera is a pretty cool thing to, to yeah. witness. It was a tink, like this twinkle, but just like Patsy Neal was one that really stood out to me. <clears throat> Excuse me. When we we were interviewing her in Charlotte, mm -hmm. and you know we're having a great time. She's awesome, but she was kind of in ill health, so she was kind of staying away. So, but once the interview started, she just it was like a glow, and she became eighteen again. Yeah, and you could just see it. And there were many of them, a lot of the ladies. Um, Betty Weissman in mm -hmm. Nashville. She yeah. was another one that she started telling those stories, and she was just like, oh yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it was countless. And it was it's so cool because you don't think about that. And honestly, something personally, I've been making myself think about those things. I've been like doing exercises to remember 20 through 30. You know what happened because of these ladies that we talked to yeah. as to not forget my own memories. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, it just energizes them and they're just alive. You know, at a time when you might be in a nursing home or kind of forgotten. Right. You know, but yeah, it's amazing. And Patsy gave us all books mm -hmm. that she'd signed. So that mm -hmm. was really neat. So, <clears throat> Well, and even I think about the final four, you know, when being up at the final four, and we had some pretty amazing mm -hmm. uh, women come through up there. Another deal where we're shooting in a, in you, you weren't I didn't a part of that, that trip, one. Yeah. <laughs> that was me and Evan, I think, on that one. But, uh, you know, we're, we're shooting in that room, and and uh, oh, mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to remember the lady that did uh, um, handled oh, the ball. Uh huh. Molly, uh, uh, machine gun. Machine Molly. gun Molly. That's yeah, right. Because right, right. <laughs> she was at Dallas, and yes. I think. But just seeing some of those things, and the the, uh, the um, I'm trying to remember the lady also that uh, is in the WNBA in um, management now. Um, but just hearing those stories. And yeah, I think you're talking about Lynn Dunn, who is yes, the that's right. GM Linda, of the yeah. Indiana Fever. Right. Yeah, some of her stories. and Mel She was she was a pistol. I, you no know, doubt. She, <laughs> in a good way. That's right. That's right. And that's what, you know, your point about you know, the, the, the countenance of their their face as they tell the story, as they told the stories. They, they became that younger version of themselves. And yeah. you could see it. Yeah. And, and they... Who knows the last time they had opportunities to tell those stories, or even think about, those or even things. think about yeah. them? And they certainly there wasn't a big media presence when they were athletes or coaches in those early years. So to be able to talk about those stories, I think they were just so excited to be able to share them, and and share them with generations to come. That's what's so exciting about this docu series is being able to preserve and and share that history. Another thing that uh, I wanted to bring up was uh, our trip to Oklahoma City. It's mm. Nancy Lieberman. That was mm -hmm. that was pretty neat. You know, uh, one of the only trips, where, maybe the only one, where we just shot one interview. Right. 
you know, and if you remember how hard we had to work to kind of get that scheduled and, you know, get her schedule lined up and, and, uh, you know, ended up being a great interview. Yeah. We had, we had hoped to, to have her come to Kansas city and her schedule didn't allow. And, and when we had done the Dal uh, the Texas, uh, set of interviews, we were really focusing on those 50s and 60s years. And yeah. so, uh, you know, Nancy Lieberman played for Old Dominion in the late 70s and won a couple of national championships. And so we really wanted to capture that. So we were able to meet her when she was doing a, a game for the Oklahoma City Thunder and, and, and were able to get together with her. And man, she, she has some incredible life stories and uh, just was able to share some things. And, you know, a lot of these people, um, had that influence at that time, and then many of them have gone on to influence um, women's basketball, men's basketball for years and years after, and, and Nancy Lieberman is certainly one of those people. And I honestly think that she was kind of like some of the other ladies, too, that was maybe just a little bit skeptical when she got there, but by the end, she was she was bought in. Did, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. I just, I really felt like... Didn't she add another hour? <laughs> she, she did. I mean, yeah, we, I mean, we, yeah, we only out. had like a me... certain amount of time scheduled, and we ended up going yeah. a lot longer than that. You know, I think Cecil part... and I were worried about we were going to run out of hard drive space. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. glad we didn't. I'm yeah. glad we didn't. But yeah, it was uh, it was it was just a matter of um, uh, recording those things and and just being able to capture. That history and and what you said about maybe skeptical at the beginning. I'm sure that some of these women have been interviewed a lot of times. I definitely yeah. know Nancy has. Um, and, and you know what is this about? And so, because I've been a, a broadcaster of women's sports, women's basketball for 28 years, I have a, a lot of history yes. of calling games and and developing relationships with coaches and players. And I think that helped as, you know, to get us in the door with a lot of these people. But also, as I sat down and spoke with them, they felt at ease to really tell their stories. Yeah. And and that was a really cool part of it, you know, to be able to, to draw that out of them. And, and they, they knew it was a safe interview. I wasn't going to bring up something controversial or grill yeah. them on something. They knew that they, it was a safe place to tell their story. You know, one of the things that I noticed several times is that— I think when you're interviewing somebody, they would be, you know, maybe a little guarded, but then they realize how much knowledge that you have and how prepared you were. Mm -hmm. I mean, kudos to you. I mean, the stuff that you know about <laughs> the history of women's basketball is amazing. And that would show up and they'd be, oh, even things that somebody had lived through that couldn't remember and you would help them remember it. Yeah. That, yeah. that was amazing. Yeah. And I mean, I've always uh, took pride in having a good knowledge of the history of women's back to basketball. Heck, my senior year of high school, I wrote my senior paper on the history of women's basketball. And, you know, at that time, the history wasn't nearly as, as long as it is <laughs> now. But I, I've gone back. I still have that paper. And I have some of the people that we interviewed in this docu series were in that paper that I wrote my senior year of high school, yeah. which you know, not to date myself, but just to kind of provide context, <laughs> is 1983. So the time period, you know, were the the decades before that. So we interviewed some of them. But in my my history that I wrote at that time, I didn't know anything about a lot of these women, and that's the that's the important thing about this project is there was not great media coverage in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And so a lot of this never got recorded. And so yeah. the way that this history is now being captured is by us going and doing these interviews and capturing it in this high-quality way that it can be preserved for the future because there's not a lot out there. There might be a few scrapbook photos or newspaper clippings, maybe a few videos that we found, but mostly it's these women recounting these stories that is going to be the history that is preserved. And it, it's one of the very important things about this project. Yeah. So I want to I want to transition to Dallas a little bit, you know, and, and talk about that. I mean, there's we could talk for hours about things that have happened over these last two years. Um, but and I also wanted to talk about Denver, too. That was that was a very interesting trip, mm -hmm, too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me personally, it was interesting because that was the first trip after I, I had COVID. And, you know, we don't need to go into that. But mm -hmm. but 
I was a little freaked out going to Denver because of the altitude. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, and here I am coming yeah. out. But it, it was just such a great trip. And, you know, we had such a great time. And, um, you know, just being a part of all that's really, really cool. But talk about Dallas a, a little bit. <clears throat> so we go down to Dallas and, you know, I had no idea what to expect. But here AT&T gives us this incredible theater. We have, you know, we're... Cecil and I, well, I say I, Cecil was working, you know, pretty much around the clock to get this edit done. We did three minute, three or four minute versions mm-hmm. of each of the 10, 10 episodes, mm-hmm. 4K, high resolution, get it down to them. They test it, you know, and then we're, we're coming down to Dallas to see this. And that event couldn't have gone any better. I mean, it was so awesome yeah. just seeing everybody in the theater, seeing those images up on a really, really great mm-hmm. screen. <laughs> it looked amazing. Seeing everybody respond. That you know, talk about your just your feelings about Dallas. Yeah, it was it was so cool to be able to share what we've been working so hard on the last couple of years um, in that setting. Um, after we completed most of our interviews last fall, that would have been the end of October of 2022. Um, I knew that. In order to really show people what we're doing, I thought we should put together a preview so they understood what's the scope of this story, this docu-series that we're doing, um, the quality of the interviews, all those things. And so I worked with the NCAA, and the NCAA actually agreed to host the event. Um, And the fact that, you know, I said, now we don't know, we are always real uh, flattering of the NCAA in this, in this (laughs) docu-series. I did. I said, I just want you to know it's not always painted in the best light. And they're like, we know our history. We understand. And so the fact that they hosted it was amazing. And as part of the Women's Final Four in Dallas, the 50th anniversary celebration of Title IX, and then, as you mentioned, AT&T headquarters are there, and we were in this incredible theater. And I was down there the day before and watched it on the screen, and about it brought tears to my eyes because it looked so good yeah. on that theater screen. And so we invited people that we had interviewed, we invited people that had uh, contributed to the project so far. It's we've set it up as a uh, a, a nonprofit um, production so that people can make charitable contributions. So we invited those that made contributions, and then some other special VIP guests. And we filled up this 170 seat theater, and we had so many guests that there was an overflow area and this really cool digital wall out in the other area where there were probably 75 to 100 more people watching in that area. Yeah. And so just to see the images on those cool screens and have those those women and the men that we interviewed watch themselves and watch the story unfold. And we the feedback that we got was, you know, we had, we had an idea that, that this was going to be, a, you know, a good project, but wow, this is incredible. And it looks so good. And the stories that you captured and this is amazing. Yeah. And just the responses that we got, um, just it was so exciting and so cool. And, you know, we still have to raise the money to produce the entire, the full series, every episode. But we've got a lot of momentum and, and some interest. And anybody that's interested in helping us preserve and share these stories are, are welcome to join and be a part of our team. But it that event in Dallas was just um it was one of a kind. I mean, probably yeah. that group that was assembled, just one example real quickly, uh, Marion Washington, who yeah. coached at, at KU for so many years, was a part of the first national championship in 1969. And then she got invited to be on the U.S. national team. She was one of the first two black women to compete for the U.S. on a national team. She was told and their team was told they would be preparing for the 1972 Olympics to play basketball. A woman named Alberta Cox. It was from Raytown, Missouri. So right here in the Kansas City area was the coach. They trained for seven months and then they learned that women's basketball would not be in the 1972 Olympics and they were all crushed. But five members of that team were in attendance at that event in Dallas. And it was the first time that many of them had seen each other since 
back in 1971 and 72. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so they were like, Marion comes and grabs me and she says, these are my teammates. These are my teammates. I haven't seen them for so, for so long. And I said, I know I've, I've interviewed most of them. They're yeah. part of this story. <laughs> and it gives me goosebumps right now. And, and I, it's one of the pictures that I've posted on social media since then. It was one of the really special things of that event was bringing back, you know, some of the members of that team. Yeah. Uh, that a lot of them went on to influence women's basketball in many different ways, and Marion Washington was a big part of our history in women's basketball. You know, I also want to talk about Bessie. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she was she was uh, very interesting at at Dallas, but flew all the way to Kansas City, by the way, to get to do her interview. And I don't, rem- I know you remember it, but you know that we had to we had to make some arrangements for that to be for that to happen. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember all the details mm-hmm. or want to talk about that, but mm-hmm. flew from the East Coast, right? Yeah, all all the Washington, way here by herself. DC. Yeah. And her, I think it was her daughter helped her, her maybe. Her niece. Her, her niece. niece, okay. Yeah, I have to give Belinda <laughs> the proper credit. <laughs> right. <laughs> but helped her do that. She did it all in one day. Yeah, yeah. Came, flew in, did her interview, and then flew out that night, if yeah, I remember. Yeah, the, the next morning. Next but morning, yes, okay. Yes, uh-huh. <clears throat> but then, then we get to Dallas, and her whole family's there. <laughs> And I don't know that she kind of really sensed what this was all about until Dallas. Yeah. yeah. And then, I, you know, she was like a celebrity. She was a total celebrity. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, I told Brenda earlier, we were in the lobby where they were projecting on the big wall. And we're just talking, and she's kind of like, I don't know, I don't know. And that image of her came up on that screen, and she's like, would you like to hear about the first time I got paid as a coach? <laughs> and 20 minutes later, I'm like, I'm like I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> she. Amazing. <laughs> she she is an amazing person, and, and she's one of the people that I didn't know about when I started this project. And um, Valerie Still, the all-time leading scorer and rebounder still in Kentucky basketball history, men's or women's, uh, brought her to my attention. And it still took a long time for me to even find out where she was now, if she was even still alive, yeah. and was able to find her and then invited her, as you said, to come to Kansas City so we could interview her. But her story is amazing. It's one of one of the most amazing stories in this docu series. And I won't give it all away because I want people to, you know, you know, contribute and watch it, and right. watch yeah. it eventually. Right. But she played tennis on the uh, the tennis circuit, the Virginia Slims tennis circuit with Billie Jean King. And one of the fun parts about the weekend, you guys were already gone. Yeah. But at the women's final four, when uh, LSU and Iowa were playing in the championship, I was able to communicate with Billie Jean King's people. And Billie Jean came over and gave Bessie a hug in the stands during the third quarter of the game, got pictures of the two of them together and uh, it was an incredible reunion because I don't know when's the la- when the last time was they saw one another. And so besides all that Bessie contributed in basketball and being a part of our U.S. national team and competing in, in the AIAW in those years, um, she played tennis and she played with Billie Jean King. Yeah. That was pretty cool <laughs> to see them reunited. Yeah, I saw pictures of that, was maybe online or something like that. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool <laughs> thing. That was, a, that was, I mean, just that, that whole weekend was... I don't know, pretty amazing weekend. Yeah. And her family, that's the other thing I was going to mention, Bessie's family. I watched them a lot, you know, kind of. And they were just, they were so pleased. Mm -hmm. You know, you could just tell they were so happy for her to get that recognition. And they were such accomplished people in their own rights. Right. Yeah. I mean, amazing people. And, I mean, that's, it was probably Bessie's influence that, you know, guided them. It was, yeah, it was very impressive. A couple more things and then we'll wrap up. I, I, I Talk about the panel. Do you remember the panel that mm-hmm. that night at the mm-hmm. theater? I mean, mm-hmm. I just thought that panel was really cool. And, and for me, it was it was you know Jody and Sanja, um, Marsha was on the mm-hmm. panel too, mm-hmm. Bessie mm-hmm. and uh, Marion Washington and, and Marion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought it was really cool seeing the matriarchs of you know women's college basketball up there saying this is something that you need to support. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. To, to hear from them once they really saw it on the screen to see what the scope of this project is and how well this history has been preserved. Every one of them 
was so supportive of let's let's work to get this done. Let's make sure that it's supported. And there were others in the audience as well. Donna Lopiano was in the audience and Teresa Grintz was in the audience and just so many. So, you know, as you start naming people, then there's a lot of people that I won't be able to name, but yeah. the, just to have them all in that. And that's something we also, we want to do with this project. So as we as we produce this, we want to um, go to communities around the country, and I'm already speaking with some WNBA teams, um, that we want to show this this preview of each of the 10 episodes in a community so that the WNBA teams can be involved, um, corporate leaders in those communities have a chance to interact with uh, current players and coaches mm -hmm. that are having such an influence, but also get the history of how we got to where we are. And so it's an opportunity for corporations around the country to get involved with this is through those community activities that we're planning. And we'll have panels like th we had in Dallas. So to have those those panelists sitting after and reflecting on what they had seen yeah. and, and what important history this is to capture, um, it, it was really a cool part of the program. Cecil, the last thing I, want, I, I do want to talk, you know, a little bit about the, the camera technology. I had this on the list. It's, it seems a little bit out there. But to me, it's really – for us, it's a really cool thing that yeah. we've been able to accomplish. Um, you know, the reds, you know, the, the lenses, the lighting, the camera movement, all that mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, it was a lot when we'd go into – to set up for a shoot. I mean, it, it'd take us at least – most of the time – we wanted a couple hours. We didn't always have a couple hours. <laughs> I think we got it down to an hour in some of those cases. <laughs> yeah, you guys are good. But, you um, guys are good. <laughs> it was like 40 minutes. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They were like, if you're not ready when Kim gets here, it's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be ready. <laughs> they hustled. Uh -oh. We hustled that morning that we interviewed Kim Mulkey, for sure. Yeah. I didn't happen to be on that, that actual shoot, so I didn't get to be a part of that fun. But, uh, yeah, but, I mean – I mean, it's a pretty cutting edge setup for Absolutely. for what we did, and and by design, you know, so we could capture these things in very very high resolution and brilliant cinema quality. Exactly. I mean, everything was six K, so you know, like I said, it's future proofed. You know, archival. It'll be amazing for decades. And I mean, we don't even have TVs yet that can play the stuff we shot. So yeah, that's true. You know, from that standpoint, and like you said, I mean, we had uh, the uh, automated slider. You know, with a side camera, so we got two angles on everyone, and you know we lit them very complimentary. So everyone was very pleased when they, you know, looked back at it. And which, you know, I think from a from a cinematographer standpoint, that's like my main goal. I want everyone when they watch it to go, oh, that's me, <laughs> not, ooh, that's me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah from yeah. A, so it was an awesome opportunity, and really to stretch our, you know, we got to stretch a little bit and have fun with it. Yeah. It wasn't just in a studio. And we literally did that on every interview. I mm -hmm. think every interview, 105 interviews, is mm -hmm. that correct? Mm -hmm. We've shot with, with the, the two cameras mm -hmm. set up. Pretty, pretty uh, amazing if you look back on it, what we were able to accomplish. And that's a lot of tearing down and setting up and tearing down and setting up, <laughs> driving, tearing mm -hmm. down, set up, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so. I mean – Really, the what you guys did as a crew uh, at each of the sites was remarkable. We put in some long days, yeah. and but we were able to capture o over two hundred hours of interviews uh, that that will never be duplicated ever. Yeah, the the history that we captured, you know, unfortunately, three of the people that we've interviewed have already passed away. Yeah, and 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 nobody will ever be able to to capture the content that we did. That's why this is so important. And then now putting it together in a story that's entertaining and informative and, and, and draws people in, you know, if anybody that makes a contribution to our, um, our project, will get a link to the, the private, um, sneak preview. Uh, that's how you can see it now is to be able to, you know, make a contribution yeah. and you can see it, but you, you get a sense of the emotion in this story. It's, yeah. it's the stories from the people themselves. It's, you see tears in eyes when they're talking about certain stories. You, you see the, 
kind of the frustration and some of the things that they had to battle and overcome. And, and then you hear the laughs exactly. and, and the fun <laughs> and, 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 oh my gosh, I can't believe, you know, what we did or what we were able to overcome. It's just, it's an incredible compilation of stories that we're going to be able to put together in this final docuseries. And I'm just, I'm so proud to be a part of it. I'm so proud to be your teammates on this. Yeah, And I appreciate all of your help. And um, this, uh, this is pretty special. Well, you know, as filmmakers, this is something that we dream about being part of projects like this. You know, I mean, we can do corporate video all day and <clears throat> commercials and all that stuff. And But this is the kind of project that's, you know, something that you'll that's a feather in your hat, mm -hmm. you know. Oh yeah, I worked on that project. I was a big part of that. That's so. Thank you for letting us be a part of it. In closing, I just want so somebody's watching this. They're interested in getting involved. <clears throat> what what's the path? I mean, obviously you can go to the website probably, mm -hmm. but what if it's a, a sponsor or somebody that really would love to take a deep dive? What would they do? So, um, if not for them, dot com provides a lot of information. Uh, we have, you know, promo videos, 90 second, six minute. We have other videos that we shot that tell stories. We have photos, we have stories, but then there's information. So if you're, if you're, let's give, you know, different layers. If, if you're just a person that's interested in this, you love women's sports, you love sports, um, you, you want to do something to be a part of our team and help support this, um, you can make a charitable contribution right there through the website. Um, there are various levels of support, and we're speaking with foundations that, you know, are interested in, in women's issues, in racial equality, in women's equity, in LGBTQ uh, issues. All of those are touched upon in this. And so if you, if you know of somebody that wants to help support um, preserving these stories, they can also go through the website and contact me. Um, and then if it's a corporation, there's an opportunity you can sponsor an episode. You can be a presenting sponsor of the entire docu-series. Uh, there are different uh, le levels of, of participation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, if, we, if you have the ability to put my, ad, my email address across the bottom of the screen, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, or you, it's brenda.vanlingen at gmail.com, yeah. or you can just go to ifnotforthem.com, and there's a contact button. You can contact me through there as well, and, or, or through real media. Yeah. You know, get in yeah. touch with us through real media. Yeah. And and, and there are opportunities. Like I said, we're, we're having some conversations right now. There are some people, some entities, some um, corporations that are interested. Um, and it's just a matter of finding the right ones to all come together. And so if you want to be a part of this, there's still time. And, you know, we, we'd love to have people that can help us preserve and share this important history. Yeah. And it's still – we've got a lot accomplished, but we still have a lot – to a lot do, to go. Yep. you know, the the, the post production on these episodes is a lot of work, but it's it's they're going to be amazing. I mean, and they're going to be they're going to really impact people for a long time, and <clears throat> so it's very exciting. So we'd love we'd love to have you inv involved if you're looking at the camera right here. Okay? <laughs> we'd love to have you involved. And thank you for joining us today, Brenda. It's a, um, I knew this would be easy. You know, I, I feel like we're leaving a lot of stuff out. We may have to do a second version, uh, but this this is so much fun, and we have more fun coming. And it's you know it's going to be awesome putting all these together and just seeing people impacted by it. It's, it's to me the most exciting thing. Yeah. So this is the Inner World with Real Media podcast. Thanks for joining us. Uh, be sure to subscribe so you get a little ding on your phone every time that we put a new podcast out. And we'll see you next time. This has been In a World with Real Media. Thanks for joining us and be sure to subscribe on iTunes and follow Real Media on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn so you never miss an episode.